Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. A woman from Canada has been identified as the person killed after being trampled by a horse in Fargo. While her family is mourning the loss, federal data shows less than two dozen people die each year because of horses. Valley News Team's Joshua Pagero spoke with a woman's friends and talked with a horse expert about how to properly handle these large farm animals. 57-year-old Kimberly Elliott of Alberta, Canada was fatally injured at the North Dakota State University Equine Center Tuesday morning. She's just one of those people that everybody was blessed to have in their world. Laurie McDonald has known Elliot for nearly 30 years and says her heart sank when she learned of Elliot's death. If you needed it and she could help, she would. Um, she was there for everybody and anybody. Her love and support of rodeo was huge. McDonald says Elliot has been handling horses for more than 20 years. The horse that trampled her had been inside a trailer when it got spooked, knocking her to the ground. Friends of Elliot tell us one of the reasons why she was still in Fargo on Tuesday was because of the snowstorm that kept her here for a few days. Jubilee Equine in Horace houses more than 30 horses and teaches people how to safely ride one. It's easy to get complacent once you've, you think you know your horse and what's going to happen in all these situations, but they're a prey animal, so, you know, you cannot... You cannot predict their behavior 100% of the time. The horse barn emphasizes that those who ride horses at their location follow the rules, like wearing a helmet. A horse has a heart as big as a basketball, and when you're near that, it sp spills over. And they can be a very calm animal by and large. If we handle them in a calm way, they choose to calm down. Elliot's employer posted a somber note on its Facebook page describing her as a tenacious woman who was tough as nails. In Horace, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention states that 72 people die each year from injuries related to farm animals, 20 of which involve horses. We are getting used to the 30s and all that melting taking place on the roadways. Let's check in with Hutch for a look at this evening in your no-wait weather. Hutch. Thanks, Andrea. What a beautiful day. Once again, that sunshine went to work on snow on area roads and sidewalks out there. A beautiful setting sun also out to the southwest. As we uh, go through our December day, more clouds building in the northern valley and the radar detecting just a few weak echoes of snowflakes up there as that is where if we have a chance of snow, we will see it this evening. Temperatures slipping into the 20s for most a little chilly in Fergus Falls, a low 20s for you, 26 Bemidji, 30 in Bedette this hour. And well, look at this, as we have shifting wind direction today to a southerly one, we'll see quickly falling temperatures. And then as we go into the overnight hours, Andrea, looks like it'll be a little warmer if you're going to walk the Chihuahua out there tonight. Yeah. Overnight, uh, temperatures should be rising across the valley. We do have snow uh, in the forecast for Thursday. Then we have some cold air punching in. I'll have the hour by hour details of what you can expect in the forecast here in just a few moments. What happened to walking the llama? Well, the chihuahua needs to get out once in a while too. <laughs> True, yeah. Thanks. Yes. So. A West Fargo woman is warning of a new text scam going around. After she and her friends received text messages with her first and last names included, their exact addresses and a mysterious link. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with a woman today who says she feels like it could be an easy scam to get sucked into. It was a strange text to get from an unknown area code. When I first saw it and they had my address, I was like, okay, this is super weird. Like, how did you get my address? I mean, it's super easy nowadays, but you're from a different area code. I don't know you. The text was simple. Her first and last name, her exact address, and a link. It could be scam. It could be someone trying to get my location. Where the link would take her or what it might do to her phone, Raleigh wasn't sure. It's like, do I click on it? Do I not click on it? But ultimately, curiosity won the battle and Raleigh decided to see what that sketchy text was all about. And it was like a cleaning company. So it's like, what do you want with me? Are you an actual cleaning company or is this just like your fake website you have? She took to Facebook and luckily found she's not the only one in the metro getting these weird texts. But I wanted to see just what this cleaning website looked like, only to find the link now brings you to a used car website, asking you for loads of personal information right on the front page. Your regular address, best time to call you, your social security. 
date of birth, employment information. Yeah, no thank you. Raleigh says the simplicity of the text and the chameleon-like website makes her worried the scam might get the best of someone if they're not careful. Even older people, like, they would be like, oh, free cleaning? Sure, let's do it. And then people show up at their house and they can end up hurt. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. For ways to look up or report scams in your area, head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. A 36-year-old man will be behind bars for the next six months after pleading guilty to having a sexual conversation with a minor. Officials say Jason Dvorak will serve time on a felony count of luring a minor along with a misdemeanor for possessing child porn. According to court documents, Dvorak had a sexual conversation with an 8-year-old girl back in August. He has to register as a sex offender and be on supervised probation for five years after his sentence. Authorities have released the cause of a 2017 explosion that killed two people and badly damaged a school in Minneapolis. The report, released Monday by the National Transportation Safety Board, says the explosion and fire at the Minnehaha Academy was caused by human error. According to the findings, workers for a natural gas supplier mistakenly thought a gas valve was turned off when they tried to move gas meters. Federal investigators concluded that blast happened because a pipe fitting crew lacked proper training and wasn't fully authorized to move a gas meter. Three legal scholars testified before the House Judiciary's first impeachment hearing of President Trump today on Capitol Hill. The witnesses explained the constitutional grounds for impeachment, including bribery, high crimes and misdemeanors. Three of the four scholars agreed about the action that should be taken against President Trump, while the lone dissenter said that the case against President Trump is legally weak. The very idea that a president might seek the aid of a foreign government in his re-election campaign would have horrified them. But based on the evidentiary record, that is what President Trump has done. Officials say if the committee decides the president's actions warrant it, they will draw up formal articles of impeachment for the full house to vote on. The Minnesota Attorney General says his office is filing a lawsuit against Juul Labs, the manufacturer of vaping products. Keith Ellison t said today his office is suing the labs, alleging they have deceived and misled Minnesota consumers of all ages. Problems with vaping continue across the country, with nearly 50 deaths and more than 2,000 people affected by lung illness linked to vaping. Three of those deaths were in Minnesota. But my message to Jewel as they're listening today is you can hire your attorneys, you will have your day in court, but we will bring the righteous justice of the state of Minnesota down on Jewel. Earlier this fall, Governor Tim Walz went on a three day tour with students and teachers to learn more about the vaping boom in Minnesota schools. Part of the reason for the tour was to help the current administration understand the faces and stories behind the growing numbers. Former President Jimmy Carter is recovering at home after being released from a Georgia hospital this afternoon. Carter was admitted to a medical center over the weekend and treated for a urinary tract infection. A Carter Center representative says the former president is feeling better. President Carter, who turned 95 years old in October, has been hospitalized several times this year, mainly for injuries sustained in falls. He has had hip replacement surgery, a fractured pelvis, and surgery to relieve pressure on his brain. If you still need a ticket for Saturday's game, you're in luck. Today, NDSU officials put more than 2,500 tickets on sale. Reserved seats start at 31 bucks in the end zone and 41 on the sideline. Tickets can be purchased online at gobison.com by calling 888-231-NDSU or at the Bison Ticket Office weekdays from 8 in the morning until 5 at night. Any remaining tickets Saturday will be sold at the Fargo Dome box office beginning at 9.30 in the morning. Single game tickets for potential quarterfinal and semifinal games at the Fargo Dome will go on sale the Wednesday of each game week. And if you can't get your hands on one of those tickets, don't forget to join us for the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show on Saturday at 1.30. We'll take you right up to kickoff at 2.30 on ESPN3.